All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Today, we are going to talk about distracted driving and potential distraction of CAV technologies. So today, we are talking about this project, which has been done by three researchers, Dr. Jehani, myself, and Ms. Ramina Javid. So I would like for every one of the researchers to introduce themselves. So we can start with Dr. Jehani, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, I am the I am Ansura Jehani, the professor and the director of National Transportation Center and Urban Mobility and, Equ and Equity Center at Morgan State University. Um, and this project is with uh, Maryland Department of Transportation, Maryland Highway Safety Office. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Dr. Jehani. My name is Eza Sadek Vaziri, and I'm a postdoctoral research associate and adjunct faculty at Morgan State University. I have around 10 years of experience and I have been working in different areas such as travel pattern analysis, driver behavior analysis, equity in transportation, and shared mobility systems. Uh, I have been a member of two TRB committees and I'm working on different research projects. Thank you for joining us today and Ms. Javid. Hello everyone, my name is Ramina Javid. I am a PhD candidate and graduate research assistant at the Department of Transportation and Urban Infrastructure at Morgan State University. Good, thank you very much everyone. All right, so this uh, presentation has brought to you by National Transportation Center at Morgan State University. Uh, please feel free to contact us via our email or via our social media, we would be more than happy to hear from you and receive any feedbacks. Or if you would like to uh, collaborate with us, we would be more than happy. All right, so here is the agenda of our presentation today. So first we are gonna talk about the introduction of the, the project that we have, which is gonna be basically about distracted driving and CAV technologies. And then we will talk about the problem statement and our objective. And then we'll in investigate about the potential distraction of CAV technologies. And then we'll move on to preventing distraction while driving section. And then we will conclude and summarize our project. All right, let's start with the introduction. So the exact definition of distracted driving is very straightforward. If you are engaged in an activity that takes your eyes off the road, you are driving distracted from drinking coffee to checking on kids in the rear mirror, distracted driving is all too common, but it's incredibly dangerous. Like texting and driving, uh, this behavior results in loss of mental uh, focus requires to drive safely, even if you take away momentarily. Uh, car crashes due to distracted driving numbers is in getting increased and unfortunately, it's result to some fatals every year. Distracted driving claims eight lives per day, approximately 300, um, 3,500 per year. And roughly 20% of injuries uh, occurring in, in car crashes involving distracted driving. So drivers were 30% more distracted in February 2022 than they were in February 2020, make it, make it the worst month of the phone distraction in the US since 2019. Distraction fall in different categories. The very first one can be categorized as a visual distraction, which cause uh, you to move your eyes away from the road, like turning to talk uh, to passengers or child in the back seat. Another one can be other third distractions, which are sounds that cause you distractions to shift like listening to music or conversation among passengers. And the other one is manual distractions happen when your hand move away from the wheel, like eating, drinking, and using electronics. And also the other category is cognitive distractions, which happens when your mind wanders or, and you are no longer focused on driving, like you are uh, preoccupied with strong emotions or too tired to drive. All right. So all of us know what CAV stands for. CAV stands for Connected and Autonomous Vehicles. Sometimes we said Connected and Automated Vehicles as well, pretty much the same. 
Well, CAV technologies refer to a wide range of technology that are designed to enhance the safety, efficiency, and convenience of cars and other vehicles. Some of the key CAV technology that can be found in modern cars can be any one of these things that you can see in this slide. For example, the first one, ADAS, which stands for Advanced Driver Assistant Systems. Well, this system uses sensors, cameras, and other technology to help drivers stay safe on the road by warning them to potential of potential hazard, uh, assisting with braking and steering, and providing other features such as adaptive cruise control. Another one is connected car technologies. These technologies uh, allow cars to communicate with other vehicles and with infrastructure such as traffic lights and road signs, enabling them to optimize the route and improve overall traffic flow. The other one is navigation system. Modern navigation systems use GPS and other technologies to provide drivers with real-time information about their location, route, and traffic conditions, helping them to reach their destination and safely and efficiently. And the other one is in-vehicle information systems. This system provides drivers and passengers with a range of entertainment and information options, including music, video, internet access, and more. And the other one is V2V or V2I, which are standing for vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to vehicle, and vehicle to infrastructures communication technologies. These technologies enable cars to communicate with other vehicles and with inform uh, in infrastructure providing drivers with real-time information about traffic condition, hazard, and other factors that can improve their safety and efficiency. And also uh, autonomous driving technologies that uh, enable cars to operate without human input using a range of sensors, cameras, and other technologies, navigation, uh, navigate the road and avoid hazard and respond to the changing traffic conditions. Well, CAV technologies have potential to greatly improve road safety and convenience for drivers. But some of these technologies can also be source of distraction for drivers as well which can increase the risk of uh, crashes on the road. Well, automakers and researchers are continuously working on them to design the, uh, and develop a new CV technology that minimize driver distraction and improve safety on the road. So the problem is that although numerous uh, researchers have been working on distracted driving behavior and many researchers have also been working on different aspects of uh, connected and automated vehicles, but most drivers and stakeholders are not fully aware of distracted driving behaviors due to CAV technologies, and they have not been educated about the potential safety issues of CAVs. Therefore, our objective is to reduce the number of crashes due to distracted driving and decrease and distraction prevention technologies by educating Maryland drivers. So we are uh, planning, we plan to educate drivers by hosting an online webinar uh, regarding distracted driving to, to a new uh, CV technologies. All right, now let's uh, talk a little about distract, potential distraction of CAVs, which I'm gonna hand it to Ms. Javid. Ms. Javid, please. Thank you, Dr. Vaziri. Um, so in this section, we will talk about some CAD technologies and their potential distractions for drivers. So one of the main ways that CAD technologies can distract drivers is by requiring their attention away from the road. Um, for example, in vehicle displays, infotainment systems, and navigation systems all require the driver to take their eyes off the road and interact with the technology in order to use it. So many of these systems are designed to be voice activated or hands-free, but even using these types of systems can, distract, can be distracting and increase the risk of crashes. Another potential source of distraction is uh, the increased complexity of modern cars. So many CAV technologies require drivers to understand and use a variety of controls, including touch screens, buttons, and voice commands. So this complexity can lead to confusion and frustrations for drivers. CAV technologies can also be a source of cognitive distraction, even if they don't require drivers to take their eyes off the road 
Um, another potential source of distraction is the present presence of multiple sensors, cameras, and other monitoring system. Uh, for example, a driver may become annoyed or frustrated by frequent alerts from a lane departure warning system, causing them to ignore the system or even turn it off. And finally, some of these uh, CAV technologies can be a source of distraction simply because they are novel and entertaining. For example, in car entertainment systems or virtual assistants uh, may be fun to use, but uh, they can also take driver's attention away from the road uh, and increase the risk of crashes. Um, so the first um, technology that we are going to talk about is lane departure warning systems. So lane departure warning systems are designed to alert drivers when they are unintentionally drift out of their lane. So they are designed to improve safety, but um, there are some ways that they can distract drivers. One of them is false alarms. So these systems may generate false alarm, such as when driving on roads with faded or irregular lane marking. Uh, so these false alarms can be annoying and cause drivers to pay less attention to the system in the future. Also, drivers may become overly um, reliant on this technology, assuming that the system will always alert them when they are at risk. So this can lead to reduce attention to the road. Another one is, so these systems are quite complex with multiple warning modes, a sensi sensitivity, sensitivity settings and other custom, custom, customizable features. So drivers may spend too much time adjusting the system setting, which can take their attention uh, from the road. Another one is lane centering assist. So these systems also can cause drivers uh, to become over-reliant on the technology and resulting in them not paying attention to the road. So this can lead to drivers become distracted and not properly monitoring the vehicles surrounding. Also, the system can be inaccurate at times or sometimes drivers may find the frequent corrections and warnings um, kind of distracted or irritating. Another one is blind spot monitoring system. So these systems use sensors to detect whether, uh, to detect other vehicles uh, that may be traveling in the driver's blind spot and provide a visual or audible alert to warn the driver of their presence. So they are generally considered to be a valuable safety feature, uh, but they also can potentially distract drivers in few ways. So drivers may become re overly reliant on the system and stop checking their blind spots manually. So assuming that the system will always detect any uh, risk or hazard. Another one is uh, sometimes uh, can occasionally um, they can give false alarms and uh, because of a malfunction or because the system has detected a harmless object. So these false alarm can be distracting for drivers and may lead them to ignore or become, um, become uh, distracted in the future. Another one is that driver may, may become fatigued or annoyed by the constant alert from the blind spot monitoring system. And um, particularly if they are driving in a heavy traffic where there are many potential hazards. Uh, another technology is um, adaptive cruise control, um, which is a driver assistant technology that automatically adjusts the speed of a vehicle to maintain a safe following distance from the vehicle ahead. So uh, there are several ways that they can distract drivers. One of them is that they can, the driver may become over, overly reliant on this technology and assume that um, this technology will always ma maintain a safe following distance without paying attention to the road condition and potential hazard ahead. 
So this can be dangerous if the, the technology fails to detect a hazard such as a sudden slowdown or obstacle in the road. Another one is that drivers may become less attentive and more likely to engage in other distracted act distracting activities such as texting, checking their phone, and others. Um, another one is that these systems can produce confusing alerts. Uh, and uh, also some of these systems do not detect stationary objects such as stopped cars or obstacles in the road, which can lead to crashes if the driver is not paying attention. Another technology is forward collision warning which are designed to alert drivers uh, if they are when they are in danger of colliding with a vehicle or obstacle ahead. So they can give false alarm, uh, either due a, to a malfunction or because the system has detected a harmless object, such as a roadside sign or a parked car. Another one is that drivers may become fatigued or annoyed by the constant alert of the system. Um, particularly if they are driving in a heavy traffic where there are many potential hazards. And another thing is that driver may assume that uh, the system will always detect any potential hazard, leading them to pay less attention to the road and other potential hazards. Uh, night vision systems are, so they are designed to improve visibility and safety. Uh, when you're driving in low light conditions, such as an, at night or foggy weather. weather. So uh, the additional information provided by this system can be overwhelming for some drivers, uh, especially if they are not uh, used uh, to use this uh, technology. Uh, and even though these systems can improve visibility in low light condition, they are not reliable and can have limitations such as reduce visibility during heavy rain, snow, or fog. And they also um, the, may develop a false sense of security when using the night vision system, assuming that they can see all potential hazards on the road. Pedestrian detection systems, they are designed to detect pedestrian and other vulnerable road users, such as cyclists or animals, and alert drivers to their presence. So uh, they can occasionally produce false alarm, either due to malfunction or because of the system has detected a harm harmless object. Another thing is that drivers may become fatigued or annoyed by the constant alert of the pedestrian detection system. And um, one other thing is that drivers may assume that the pedestrian detection system will always work. So they pay less attention to the road and other potential hazards. Um, another technology is drowsiness detection systems or also distraction detection cameras, which are designed to monitor a driver's uh, level of alertness and detect when they are maybe becoming drowsy or distracted. So they can also potentially distract drivers. Um, they can produce false alarm uh, due to malfunction or because the system has detected behavior that may not necessarily indicate drowsiness, such as driver looking away briefly or just looking at the radio. Uh, another thing is that driver may become over-reliant on the drowsiness detection system to keep them alert, so leading, leading them to pay less attention to their own level of alertness or to their road. Another technology is voice activated controls. So uh, they can be a convenient way for drivers to interact with in-car technology, but they also can potentially distract drivers. One of them is that they may sometimes misrecognize or delay the driver's voice command, leading to frustration or distraction as a driver attempts to repeat or clarify the request. Another thing is that they may be complex or require the driver to use specific phrasing or command, leading the driver to be confused and uh, or frustrated. Another thing is that 
driver may become overly reliant on these systems to operate uh, in car technology and leading them to take their eyes off the road for extended periods of time or become distracted while attempting to interact with the system. Augmented reality displays, um, they're a relatively new technology that can project uh, digital information or images into the real world and creating an immersive and interactive experience for users. So they can be visually engaging and may draw a driver may draw driver's attention away from the road, leading to reduce awareness and increase risk of crashes. Another thing is that interacting with these AR display may require a driver to use their cognitive resources, leading to a reduced ability to focus on the road. And they uh, and also drivers may become uh, over reliant on the system. Um, in vehicle displays, including infotainment screens and navigation systems, and gesture gesture and touch based controls can be a source of distraction for drivers as well. So uh, one of uh, one of the ways uh, to distract them is visual distraction. So they require drivers to look at and interact with the screen, which can cause visual distraction. Another thing is cognitive distraction, um, which means that drivers are thinking about something other than driving. And the other one is manual distraction. Um, this means that driver may have less control over the vehicle and may be less able to respond to sudden changes in traffic. Entertainment systems such as in-car video players or streaming services, they can also be a major distraction for drivers. Um, so uh, the first and most important one is visual distraction. And drivers may be tempted to watch a movie or video instead of focusing on the road. Uh, they also have cognitive distraction. And we also have auditory distraction, uh, which means that loud or Distracting audio from the entertainment system can be a major distraction for drivers, reducing their ability to hear important cues or warning from other safety systems. We also have virtual assistant and voice activated controls uh, that they have, uh, they are becoming more and more popular in new cars and modern cars. So, interacting with this. Uh, Virtual assistants can um, require the driver to use their cognitive resources and re leading them to um, pay less attention to the road. And also, these systems may misinterpret a driver's command, leading to frustration and the need for additional interaction, which can be distracting. We also have head up displays. Um, which are a technology that projects information such as speed, navigation, and other relevant data into the windshield in front of the vehicle. So these head-up display can potentially display a lot of information at once, leading um, to an overload of visual information that may distract drivers. Um, these technology may also display information that is difficult to interpret or understand, and so leading the driver uh, to uh, attempt to read the information and distract uh, the driver. Uh, they also can uh, malfunction, um, leading to additional distraction. Um, another technology is in-car gaming system which are relatively new technology. So these systems typically feature games that can be played by passengers in the back seat or by the driver during periods of low traffic or when the, par the car is parked. So uh, this system often includes bright and colorful graphic that can draw a driver's attention away from the road. Um, they even if the driver is not actively playing the game, the presence of an in-car gaming system can be a cognitive dis distraction for the drivers. 
And they also can malfunction or take, they have technical issues that can cause additional distraction or safety hazards. We also have uh, driver monitoring systems um, to help improve safety on the road by monitoring driver behavior and alerting drivers when they appear to be distracted or fatigued. Um, so if the driver monitoring system is not properly calibrated or if it is overly sensitive, it may generate false alarm and distract drivers. Uh, they also, um, if the if the in, the user interface of this technology is not is poorly designed, it may be a distraction itself. And if the drivers become too reliant on the on the system, they may start to assume that the system will always detect and alert them. The other one is traffic sign recognition system which um, they, uh, they detect and identify traffic signs, such as speed limit signs and stop signs. So um, these systems can be a useful tool for drivers uh, as they provide real-time information about, about the important traffic regulations and help drivers stay away, uh, aware of their surroundings. Um, so one of the ways that it can distract drivers is that if the driver become too reliant on traffic sign recognition system, they may start to assume that the system will always detect and alert them to traffic signs, even if they are not paying full attention to the road. Uh, it also uh, may cause false positive. If a traffic sign uh, uh, system is not properly calibrated, it may generate false positive alerting the driver to non-existing traffic signs. And if a traffic sign recognition system generates too many alerts or notification, it could potentially be a distraction to drivers as well. We have automatic emergency braking or AEB systems, which are designed to detect potential crashes and apply the brakes automatically to prevent or mitigate a crash. So if a driver becomes too reliant on the system, they may start to assume that the system will always detect and uh, prevent crashes if they are, even if they are not paying uh, fully attention to the road. So if they are not properly calibrated, it may gener generate false positives, applying the brakes unnecessarily and potentially startling or distracting the driver. And also, if drivers know that uh, their car has an AEB system, they may be less likely to pay attention to the road and they may engage in distracting activities such as using their phones or adjusting their entertainment systems. We also have adaptive front lighting systems, uh, which use sensors to adjust the direction and intensity of a vehicle's headlights based on driving conditions. So um, drivers may become overly reliant on these systems and assume that their vehicle's headlights will always adjust automatically. This could lead to a false sense of security and make drivers less attentive to the road. And they can also cause the headlights to change direction or intensity frequently, which can be distracting for drivers. In some cases, these systems can create glare or reflections that can temporarily blind or distract drivers. This can happen when the headlights are distract, uh, like um, um, directed at reflective surfaces, such as road signs or other vehicles. Uh, so we have uh, self-driving cars or autonomous driving systems. Um, so these systems may be uh, distractive as well. So drivers may become overly reliant on the autonomous driving system and assume that it will always operate safely and effectively. So this can lead to, uh, to drivers that take less attention to the road and increase the risk of crashes. We always have the system malfunction uh, 
um, which can sometimes uh, the system can fail if a self-driving car experiences a technical issue or software glitch, it may require the driver to take over control at a moment's notice. So this sudden transition can potentially cause distraction or confusion for the drivers. So we also have loss of situational awareness. So uh, if the, uh, the vehicle is handle many driving tasks automatically, so drivers uh, still need to remain aware of their surroundings and be prepared to take control of the vehicle if necessary. We also have the novelty factor. Uh, these technology are relatively new and unfamiliar to many drivers. So these novelty factor can be exciting and tempting to explore, but it can also be distracting. For example, drivers may be more likely to take their hands off the wheel or turn around to talk to passengers while using an autonomous system. So there are some ways that we can prevent distraction causing by CAV technologies. One of them is improved design of in-car displays. So display screens and information systems should be designed in a way that minimizes distraction and makes it easy for drivers to quickly access the information they need without taking their eyes off the road. Another thing is time-based restrictions on certain features. So some CAV technologies could be restricted during certain times or in certain driving conditions to prevent distractions. Uh, we always have education and training, which is the most important factor. So drivers can be trained and educated on how to use CAV technologies safely and responsibly. Um, we have simplified interfaces. So interfaces for in-car displays can be simplified with less uh, uh, items on the screen and easier to use controls. So this can reduce the cognitive load on driver and make it easier for them to focus on the road. Um, so you should always familiar, familiarize yourself with the technology. So drivers should take the time to um, educate themselves uh, with CAV technologies in their car before hitting the road. Uh, so this can include reading the manual, attending training sessions, or watching educational and tutorial videos. We have minimized device use. So drivers should minimize the use of devices like smartphones or tablets while driving, as they can be a significant source of distraction. So always uh, plan ahead uh, plan your routes um, um, and set up unnecessary navig uh, set up any necessary navigation or other systems that you need you might need during your driving. So this can help reduce the need to adjust the systems while driving. And also, drive driving for long periods of time can be tiring and lead to decreased attention and increased distraction. So drivers should take regular breaks to rest and recharge before getting back on the road. So we should say that um, while all of these technologies have the potential to distract drivers, they also have the potential to enhance driver safety. So proper education and training can help reduce the risk of as risks associated uh, with CAV technologies and ensure that they are used safely and responsibly. And that's all for today. Thank you for participating in our webinar. And now it's time for your questions. If you have any questions, please, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Javid. We would be more than happy to receive any feedback, any question, any comment from you. Don't be shy, please put it in the chat box.
We see no questions. Yeah, it seems no questions, okay. Either it was um, very well explained <laughs> <laughs> or very confusing, um, but um, I'm glad the people joined and hopefully you, you could get something out of it. Yeah, there are two questions actually. Yes, we oh. have, yeah. Oh, okay, great. So Ramana, go ahead. Uh, one person asked, uh, with driver monitoring systems, are they learning systems? Um, so driver monitoring system uh, usually is, um, so you need to put it uh, in your car and you need to calibrate it and it will, uh, it will alert you like a vibration on your steering wheel or an audible or sound and that you are getting distracted or drowsy. So I saw some videos that they're explaining it like very comprehensively in YouTube. And you, if you're interested, I can send them to you to learn more about them. I'm not sure the question is, are they learning system? Do you mean machine learning that they, they improve based on the driver performance and they, they know they learn more about the driver is that the question or um or you meant learning how to how it works if you can elaborate uh, we can explain more um you Ramira, you want to go to the second question sure um, so Fatima asked about over-reliance, what will that happen? So uh, usually when you uh, rely on technology, for example, if you always think that um, if you um, change your lane, uh, you will uh, receive a notification from blind spot warning detection. And sometimes if it mal malfunctions, um, that will cause you like a crash. Uh, so um, the advice is that you always need to check yourself, like manually check your blind spot and uh, just um, not rely on technology always. Yeah, that would be great if we could use those technologies as additional safety, not replacing our abilities to, to, to add to what we are doing and um, always be careful, um, drive safe and use everything that we, we were doing before and use all of this technology for additional safety and, and um, for ourselves and, and for other people around us. Um, and yeah, not totally relying, but on the technology part also, it's great if, um, I mean, it's happening in, in a lot of cars now, if we have redundancy. So we have um, technologies on, on, on different technologies, different technologies on different ends. And so each of them covering and overlapping each other, that, that makes it safer and safer and safer, like safety um, on top of safety that uh, we have to do from technology part, but from uh, driver part, we always uh, need to pay attention that those are not to replace us. Those are all to help us. Um, for the driving monitoring system, I think um, they asked the question, do they learn more about the driver as they use it? So uh, I saw uh, some of the new technologies, they use AI uh, to and machine learning to kind of enhance this technology. So I think yes, but not all of them. Uh, the, like the previous version, it was and just a camera that uh, just uh, detects your eye movement, but the new ones, yes. And somebody saying the chat box is disabled, but um, Q and A is working, so we are reading from Q and A. Um, Fatima said, "I mean that." Why will that happen? Mostly drivers don't realize such technologies. How can it be a serious problem? 
so I think that um, right now they are kind of, uh, some of them are new technologies. Uh, so people won't rely on them like a lot, but uh, during time, um, people most likely to uh, rely on them more and that can be dangerous. There is another question. Um, are you reading it, Ramina? Uh, yeah, just now. Thank you for your presentation. Have you ever specified the special time interval for different types of distracted driving? For example, how long are people distracted from on-road to off-road and how CAV can compensate for the time interval? If yes, how did you specify this time interval? How did you justify the time interval for different groups of people with different age groups, races, and driving abilities? Do you want me to answer, Romina, or you want? Yes. You, you have it. Okay. Um, so on average, the um, uh, driver um, perception and reaction is 2.5 seconds. And most of those technologies, um, they use two seconds, which is before the, the, um, that 2.5 second happened. So if in every two consequence, uh, consequence second, um, the, the technology realizing that the person is distracted, then the technology gonna work um, and the countermeasure gonna work. I don't know if I answered you um, totally what, what you wanted. And if uh, Dr. Vazir and Romina wanna add anything to that. Yeah, absolutely. All these technologies are trying to be a bit more, a bit faster than human beings reaction. As you mentioned, they're all trying to be less than 2.5 seconds reaction. But as Ramina mentioned in her presentation, her slides apart, uh, sometimes for some reason they are not working 100% accurately. So again, we need to ensure that we are having our attention on the road. Meanwhile, we are using these technologies as well. Uh, Fatima also asked, uh, are all of those technologies can be implemented on a vehicle at the same time? Um, so uh, a lot of uh, technologies are currently built in the car, like uh, blind spot detections or lane departure warnings or lane centering assist. And uh, I know that there is an option that you can uh, just add some technologies when you want to buy the car. Also, some of them you can buy it from the third party, like head up displays. They, you can just buy it from Amazon and just install it on your car. Uh, and also, you know that the, um, at least the autonomous part, the autonomous um, has level zero to level five. Level zero has no um, autonomy in it, no, uh, no driver assist as also, and level five as being um, totally um, like autonomous. Um, so um, driverless can be. Um, so in each of the levels, there are more uh, and more of uh, autonomy adding to it. Um, but those ADAS, uh, all of this driver assist, can happen between level one to three, uh, but after that is even um, uh, more and more of the, the, the vehicle driving by itself. And, uh, yeah, and there's one, uh, another question. Um, so what, what, what uh, are doing to ensure the computer do not crash while autonomous cars are moving? So like any other technologies, definitely they are making, they're testing it millions of times to ensure that they're working before putting it in front of the, I mean, the road. Uh, but still there is a slightly possibility that something is not working. A few years ago, there was an accident, there was a crash in uh, Florida for the uh, Tesla. And, but these kind of things happen very rarely, but, Definitely, they are testing them uh, lots of times before making it. I mean, to make sure that they're working and before putting it uh, in the market. 
And yeah. And let me add to it, Tesla is not a level five. Mm -hmm. So if people use it as level five and um, <laughs> the, the crash happened, <laughs> it's not the technology problem. You, you, are, you need to be attentive when you're using uh, autonomous part. You have to be sitting behind the wheel, your hands to be on the wheel and you still need to operate. Um, but um, use those, those features. Um, but not watching movie or being on your social media while, while the car going by itself. Um, but yeah, technology may, may fail, but what is the probability? And as Dr. Vazir said, uh, they are doing more testing. Uh, and um, when you put redundancy, that's what's redundancy. If one technology failed, the other technology gonna take over. If one way failed, the other one works. Um, but we are, way, way away from level five. So what all of this that we are talking, you are sitting behind the wheel and you are there. And if technology fails, you, you take over. So it shouldn't happen. Right, yeah, exactly. And um, you're very welcome, Fatima. And if there is any more question, we'll be more than happy to hear it. Uh, the last question that Fatima is asking, if they are being used uh, in public transit as well. Uh, for public, for I know that recently uh, they're developing automated truck as well uh, for freight mainly. If by public transit, you mean buses. Uh, I am not sure all of these technologies, but definitely some of them can be definitely such as, for example, cruise. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that cruise can be can be used in Greyhounds for the intercity buses, public transit. Uh, for the inside the cities, I haven't personally seen any one of these advanced technologies in the buses inside the city, at least for the Baltimore. But I don't think that's going to be a we are very we would be very far from installing and implementing this technology at least some of them uh, yeah definitely we can do that but i personally haven't seen them in the inside the cities yeah there's no reason not to be able to do that and at least in the research we are doing a lot on the transit part uh, like those tsp um mostly on the traffic signals um to to make the signals um, helping the transit going faster and smoother and do not um, go be, um, stay behind red light. But this kind of technologies that they talk today, um, it, it can be for any cars, but it's up to the transit agencies to upgrade their buses. Um, there is a huge uh, push right now on the electric um, buses and hopefully probably they, they will add also those uh, connected automated um, technologies as well. Yeah, exactly. And I have heard uh, that. And I, actually, I know that in uh, California, there is one electric bus which is working and operating. Uh, yeah. And thank you, Fatima, for bringing that up. That's a good question. You're welcome. Okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate your uh, your time joining us. I know that it's Friday and really, really appreciate your time for joining us. I hope that it was helpful and useful for you. And please don't hesitate to reach out to us anytime that you have any question, we will be more than happy. All right, uh, thank you and have a wonderful rest of the day and weekend, bye. Thank you all, bye.